Aries, happy Vlogmas Day 3 <laughs> and happy Monday. I'm just here, it's really early in the morning and I am humanizing myself <laughs> with Totoro here. Um, he says hello. I don't know that I have, he's always in my vlogs. It's my little coffee mug I've had for almost two years now and uh, don't want to drink out of anything else to be frank. Um, but yeah, I thought I would come on here today and just chit chat with you guys a little bit because yesterday, um, a funny story, my mom and I were coming back from Whole Foods, um, as we usually do on Sunday. And I don't know what was going on in the atmosphere. I sound like I'm going to break into a cheer from, from bring it on. <laughs> um, we were driving, uh, kind of past the downtown area and First of all, Houston in general is a very humid climate. And as a result, unfortunately, particularly this time of year, one of the things that happens is there's just a lot of mold allergens that circulate in the air. And it can be really tough for, of course, people with allergies, seasonal allergies, but really just anyone in general. I mean, it, is, it, it can be quite a bit of an allergen burden. That coupled with the fact that there's not really a freeze there. A freeze doesn't ever really occur here. So plants are kind of <laughs> continuously, you know, pollinating and doing their things. So you have a lot of pollens and plant allergens that circulate, but also it's an urban, it's an urban area. You know, it's a city, it's a huge city. It is a, it is a city in which the residents are highly reliant on automobile transportation. Public transportation is not, is not really how people get, get around here. Um, the city itself is is just kind of spread out. If you're not familiar, I mean, you can drive for you can drive for a couple of hours in any one direction and still be in the city of Houston. It is it is massive, and you know, as a result of our reliance on automobiles and fossil fuels, there is as in any urban setting setting, you know, quite a bit of quite a bit of pollution as well, unfortunately. And sometimes, I don't know what it is, it's like the combination of, of the urban smog with the pollens and the molds and things, it just kind of, it kind of gets into this, this cloud that hits you in the face. And it seems to hit, hit me in the face when I'm in the car for whatever reason. I don't know if it comes in through, in through the, the vents or what. Um, it happened to me when I first moved here. In fact, I was driving to work and I got like, I could not see. It was the most bizarre thing that had never happened to me before. And now I attribute it to, to just kind of the seasonal allergies that flare here in, co in combination with the pollen. But it honestly can really take its toll on my skin. And as this was occurring yesterday, I kind of thought of you guys because you all asked me a fair amount about like, skincare and skincare products for addressing pollution and environmental pollutants and uh, what kind of effect that those have on our skin and kind of how to how to address that so one thing that i like to do in these settings when there's like this this pollutant storm so to speak i feel like something out of a like 70s sci-fi movie and one of the things that i really enjoy doing um, as far as skincare, that is a time where I like to, I actually like to do a mask. Um, and you know, the reason being is I, I like to use the mask to just kind of pull off some of those pollutants that settle on the skin. And um, so last night I did a mask that I want to share with you guys. It is the Teamy Detox Mask. Uh, this is a green tea bentonite clay mask. But I was motivated to try this a while back. Some of you mentioned it in the comments and asked if I could review it. Um, you wanted to know my thoughts on it. Um, and I was like, Teamy has masks? I knew they made teas, which I've never tried before. But um, I looked on their site and I was pretty surprised by the fact that the ingredient list was pretty short and the price was pretty good. Um, I think this jar is 30 bucks and it goes a long, long way. It's cruelty free and vegan. So I know you guys out there who are cruelty free vegan skincare product exclusives will enjoy that aspect of it. Um, and it is pretty affordable. So I did the mask last night and I filmed myself. <laughs> um, so I'll share it with you. I've just been out and about and the, and, and the pollutants are really high and the allergens are really high. It, it takes its toll on my skin. At the end of the day, I have areas of redness, irritation, some areas of you know excessive oiliness, prominent pores. For example, um, on my forehead, uh, I can really end up looking 
looking kind of kind of wrecked, so to speak. And so gravitating towards a, a clay mask a, a few nights a week has really helped to kind of combat some of those pollutants. Um, the TV mask has bentonite clay in it. I posted a video last week going over bentonite clay um, and what it is useful for and why it is a very logical ingredient in a mud mask. Uh, so check that video out. But bentonite clay, not only can it wick up sebum and oil, but it also can bind up pollutants. Uh, on the surface of the skin and then you rinse it off. So, um, you know, it is a very logical ingredient to pursue with this sort of thing. But the main ingredient in this mask that I was really motivated to, to try out uh, for this purpose was, is the green tea in the mask. Green tea, I have several videos talking about green tea kind of here and there, but green tea applied topically to the skin has been shown to be helpful for diminishing the appearance of pores. Green tea is very high in an antioxidant called epigallocatechan uh, gallate, which is a potent uh, polyphenol antioxidant that can scavenge free radicals in our skin, help cut down on oxidative stress, and um, has been shown to improve the appearance of pores. EGCG is the polyphenol in green tea, and it is most abundant in green tea. So different teas, while, they're, while they are derived from the same plant species, different teas vary in the amount of polyphenols they have by as a result of the way the tea is processed. So green tea, unlike black tea, is not fermented, and therefore, as a result, the way green tea is processed uh, it uh, results in inactivation of an enzyme that destroys the polyphenol. So as a result, green tea has the highest amount of polyphenol, polyphenols, including the potent uh, free radical scavenger EGCG or epigallocatechan gallate. So the polyphenols in green tea are preserved more so than in other teas because the tea leaves are dried and then steamed rather than rather than the tea being fermented as in black tea. Um, polyphenols end up being about 20 to 40 percent of the um, extractable solids from green tea leaves, um, and then water and alcohol extractions of the of the tea leaf of the dry tea leaves can further concentrate and purify those polyphenols so using a mask that contains uh green tea extracts is a wonderful way to incorporate green tea polyphenols in your skincare and capitalize on that free radical scavenging activity when we go out into our environment and are exposed to ultraviolet radiation, we're exposed to pollutants, this generates a lot of free radical damage in our skin that can result in photoaging, wrinkles, sagging, discoloration, hyperpigmentation, and set the stage for subsequent development of skin cancers. And when we go out in the environment and those, those insults are you know, laid upon the skin, so to speak, our own, our body's own antioxidant system is kind of is, is depleted very quickly. The way that I use this mask is actually really easy to use. You just, uh, you know, wash your face at the end of the, the day to remove any makeup and sunscreen. Um, and then to a damp face, you wanna apply the mask. And you, you only wanna apply the mask kind of to problematic areas. So for me, it's going to be the forehead, the nose, and around the mouth. And it goes on in a nice layer. It's actually very soothing and it's not super drying or irritating. The mask is formulated with glycerin, so it is much more moisturizing than just using straight bentonite clay and mixed with water. Um, and you just need to put on a nice uh, monolayer and then let it dry for about 10 minutes. You leave it on and then you just rinse it off with water. And you can do this a few nights a week, uh, depending on how, how uh, you know, polluted an area you're living in. If you live in a more urban area, you may wanna bump it up to upwards of four nights a week. Um, so this can help, you know, it can, it can really help. And personally, I see a difference with this in just my skin after, after rinsing the mask off. You just rinse it off and, uh, you know, they, they advise you to pat the skin dry, but I apply my moisturizer directly onto the wet skin just to really um, both moisturize my skin, help my skin barrier restore itself. It's very gentle, and like I said, it's pretty affordable. 
In addition to the green tea, which is really my motivation for using this and capitalizing on those polyphenols, as well as the bentonite, which was another motivation for using this for wicking up and binding up some of those pollutants. This mask also contains uh, glycerin, as I mentioned, which is moisturizing, very easy to tolerate, very gentle. It also contains a few other things. It contains almond, sweet almond oil as well as lemongrass essence, and it also contains aloe. Aloe is moisturizing, it can be soothing, it has strong anti-inflammatory properties, it contains compounds known as aliosins that can inhibit um, some of how tyrosinase, the enzyme responsible for pigment production, um, uh, you know, how that enzyme is activated and help with brightening. Um, sweet almond oil is present in a lot of moisturizers. Uh, it's present in several um, face, a, a few face washes that I've reviewed in the past. And it imparts moisturizing properties to, to the product. And then lemongrass essence is uh, not citrus, not, not lemon as in citrus, just lemongrass. It has been shown to, like aloe, be anti-inflammatory, helpful for redness, and antimicrobial. However, these three ingredients, both the aloe, the sweet almond oil, and the lemongrass, um, for those of you out there with patch test confirmed fragrance allergy, you unfortunately have to avoid those ingredients. They can sometimes cross react. People with, with confirmed patch test allergies to fragrance can sometimes cross react. Their allergies uh, can sometimes cross react with those ingredients. So you definitely want to unfortunately avoid the mask if that is you. Both the lemongrass and the sweet almond oil um, kind of help to mask some of the odor of bentonite clay. Having done just a plain bentonite clay mask reconstituted in water, it smells a lot like, for those of you who live in the, in the low country area of South Carolina, uh, in the Charleston areas, maybe you will relate to this. It smells like mar like the marsh, like the wetlands, like pluck mud. If you know what I'm talking about, yeah, it's a distinct odor. And this mask does not have that odor in it. I believe um, the, the sweet almond oil and the lemongrass mask some of that um, and impart, impart moisturizing and anti-inflammatory properties to the mask. So it's very gentle, it doesn't dry out the skin, and as I said in the beginning of the video, it is pretty affordable at 30 bucks. In comparison to those mud masks that you all have asked me to review from Sephora, which are incredibly expensive, that is pretty affordable. And the ingredient list on this mask in comparison to those is very, very short and logical. So I prefer this mask to, to those in Sephora, it's more affordable. Check the description box down below, I was able to get a coupon code for you guys for 25% off. So so make sure you check that out. Um, it will save you even more. And I don't know if you guys noticed, but you can also get this cute little um, little teddy bear um, headband for doing the mask to keep your hair out of the way. Now that my hair has gotten longer, I have been dying to have one of these. So I'm glad to have that. It's really soft. You know how what what a um, soft fabric junkie I am. This it's it's like. I don't know, you kind of want to sleep with it. It's really comfy, very relaxing at the end of the day to get your hair out of out of the way while you do the mask. And it's really cute. So um, I'm happy to have that now that my hair is longer. It gets in the way of, of when I put on masks and skincare products. I'm always looking for ways to keep it up off of my face. But yeah, so that's just a little review of the mask. Um, I've really been enjoying it and I uh, encourage you guys to check it out who have been asking me for recommendations for green tea masks and masks to kind of uh, combat uh, pollution in an urban setting and, and maybe wick up some of that and help to help to cut down and lessen it. I think it's a fun mask to do, very easy to tolerate, not drying or irritating and affordably priced. Uh, but I'm, I'm becoming human now that I've had my coffee and I'm going to get going for my day. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and are excited for the remainder of Vlogmas. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>